Hello, in this video I will show you what you can expect from the new and fancy Gigapixel AI software from Tobias Labs to upscale your images. And I'm not going to compare it to just upscaling in Photoshop or any other software like most of the videos on YouTube do, but instead I'm going to take an image, I'm going to crop it in by 50% inside the image, then I'm going to upscale it back by the factor of 2 in order to get back the full resolution and compare that to an image obtained by just zooming in with my telephoto lens to the appropriate focal length. I want to see whether I can use the Gigapixel AI software to reliably upscale my moon and astrophotography images to avoid the need to buy another expensive telephoto lens or some kind of awkward teleconverter. So let's get started. Alright, so like I said in the intro, if you wish you had just a little bit more to reach with your photographs, especially if you're doing moon photography like me, like check out those images for instance. I always wish like I had a little bit more reach than the Canon 70 to 300 mm that I have right here. But I didn't want to invest in another lens or a teleconverter and I was looking for a perfect solution. And this applies not only to like moon or astrophotography, this is also very useful and a very common situation for like sports photographers, wildlife photographers and traditionally if you want to zoom in a little bit more you have three options you can either get a new lens which is of course expensive bulk you need to carry it around you need to switch lenses etc etc then you can get a teleconverter which basically is a piece of glass that goes between the lens and your camera and means that your lens is now zooming in twice as much or by the factor of 1.4 but those teleconverters are also kind of awkward they're also expensive and actually canon's teleconverters don't fit my 7200 which is a bummer but the teleconverters tend to soften up the image and basically they steal up a lot of light for instance the two times teleconverter steals two stops of light so the 5.6 on the 70 to 300 that i have right here at the 300 millimeters focal length now becomes f11 at the widest aperture which is pretty slow right and the third option is to just crop into the image in post-production but that inevitably costs you the resolution. The more you crop in, the more resolution you use and it goes by the square. So for instance, if you crop in by the factor of two, you are losing the resolution by the factor of four. So it degrades really fast. And if only you could crop in without losing that resolution, wouldn't that be ideal? Well, that's where software like Gigapixel AI comes into play to upscale your images after you cropped into them. So let's test how it actually performs. So what I did, is I have taken two pictures right here in a control environment. I have taken a picture of the X-Rite color checker and also the box of my newly purchased Star Adventure, which I am super excited to start using. It has some text on the box and I wanted to see how this text will be rendered after cropping in and upscaling. And I have shot two pictures. One of the pictures was shot at 100 millimeters and then another was shot at 200 millimeters, which basically gives me like two times as much reach into my subject. And the Gigapixel AI software is actually very easy to use. It's not going to be a super in-depth tutorial about every option in this software, but let's run through the basic examples. So you have two images in Lightroom and in order to load one of them up into Gigapixel AI, we need to actually export it. And the best thing to do is export it as a 16-bit TIFF in order to retain as much detail in the image. So right here, I also crop into the image by the factor of two, like I said, and then export this image as a 16-bit TIFF. Then I open the Gigapixel AI software, I load up this image and there you have a very simple UI. You can see the before and after so you can sort of see a preview of what the software would do. And right on the right hand side you have a few options. There's an option to select the resize mode. I just leave it at scale. Then you can choose your scale. You can either upscale it or downscale it. And in upscaling you can choose 2x, 4x, 6x or this fifth option. But I'm just going to use it at 2x like I said before. And then you have the face refinement, which is off or on. I just leave it at off. I don't really know what it does, but supposedly it treats faces in your images a little bit better. And then you have the select mode, which is manual or auto. I'm just gonna leave it at auto, but if you flip to manual, you have two sliders so we can trick around to your liking. You have the suppress noise and remove blur. And then you just hit save. 
And right here you have a couple of options of how you want to actually save this image. I just leave it at TIFF, 16-bit, file name default, save directory source and preserve color profile and then just hit save. And it will take a while depending on the resolution of your file but after the file is saved let's go back to Lightroom and let's compare the details. And what I actually want to do, I'm going to show you side by side two images. One of the images is cropped and upscaled and the other image is just taken with 200 millimeters focal length and try to guess which is which. In three seconds after showing up these images I'm gonna show you labels which is which. Try to guess and comment down below if you guessed correctly. Ready? Here we go! Right, did you guess correctly? Well, it's really hard to say because for me honestly there is no difference. But now I will show you those two images side by side at 100% zoom in the center of the frame and now try to guess and again in three seconds I'm gonna show you labels which is which. Try to guess for yourself. Ready? Go! And did you guess correctly? Well, I was surprised too because it turns out that the cropped and upscaled image is actually a little bit sharper than the image taken with 200 millimeters. And I didn't do anything to those images in Lightroom apart from enabling chromatic aberrations removal. So this is no sharpening in post, no whatsoever. But my guess is that probably the Gigapixel AI is doing some sharpening in post production. So I actually tried to sharpen the image taken with 200 millimeters in order to match the amount of sharpness. And to my surprise, actually the image that was cropped and upscaled is still a little bit sharper. So the conclusion for now is that this software is legit. I mean if you only crop by the factor of two and then upscale by the factor of two the results are really awesome especially with the text when you know it's very easy to tell when you have loss in resolution if you have if you have text with a very high contrast like I have here on my box of my star adventure. So what I also did is I have taken a walk yesterday in the woods and I tried to take some images with my phone actually and I have the iPhone 10 which has two cameras and one of them is a tele lens and the other one is a wide lens. So I have taken the picture of the same kind of framing with the wide lens and then the tele lens and then I basically uh, cropped in and upscaled the wide version in order to match the framing of the tele lens and check out this result. As you can see if I pan around here the text is written in different directions because of the perspective and as you can see the results is really really good again so it doesn't matter if you have high quality camera like my EOS R right here or if you're just taking pictures with your phone I think that Gigapixel AI software from Topaz Labs is a legit legit solution to, to avoid investing in longer lenses or awkward teleconverters or things like this. I think this is pretty good software honestly and I'm not affiliated with Topaz Labs in any way. I just really honestly think that this software is worth your while. It's definitely not free. It costs like under uh, 100 bucks. I think under 80 bucks or something like this. But they offer a 30 day trial so I would encourage you to actually go to the description of this video where you find a link and go try it out for yourself. I think it's a very very good and very advanced software. I'm gonna try it for my moonshots and for my deep sky astrophotography which I'm about to start again with this bad boy. Super excited for that. So definitely consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more videos about the adventure, about deep sky photography. Also I have a bunch of tutorials about astrophotography on my channel already which you can check out. I also do all sorts of Adobe products tutorials regarding filmmaking and photography so like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, After Effects etc. So check out my channel for more videos like this and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Hopefully leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I upload new videos pretty much every single week so like I said consider subscribing. But that's it for now. Have a good day. See you next time and bye bye.